Hello everyone. My name is Gavi Minas Brandis. I'm from Vancouver. I've been teaching Alexander Technique for over 30 years and I also have a PhD in education. And I've always looked for places where the Alexander work and my educational work can come together. So in this conference of developing the self, it seemed like a perfect place to present my work. So I'm very, very ha happy to be here and grateful for the opportunity to participate at this conference. So in this talk, I'll share with you some uh, findings from a research project that I embarked on um, with one of my students who is a pianist. So in this uh, presentation, I will talk about this project that um, I took on with one of my uh, students, a piano teacher, Jennifer Condy, who came for lessons and continuously asked about ways to connect what we were doing in the lesson with her students. She kept asking about students that couldn't release their shoulders and what she could do with students whose wrists were tight. So in the lessons, I started making suggestions about different activities that she could do with her students so that um, she could try to work with Alexander inspired principles in her own practice. As we continue to do that, we realized that it might be interesting to do a more systematic investigation. And uh, in this talk, I will speak about our research questions, methodology, findings, and our conclusions. So the big questions that we started with how does a young piano student's growing kinesthetic awareness impact their playing? And if it has an impact, does the student have to be conscious of this or could it just impact their learning without their consciously being actively involved in that? And our other big interest was about the connection between Alexander teacher and lessons in an Alexander office and what students do with that as they apply to different contexts in this particular case with Jennifer in her piano stu studio. And we were looking at the bridges and challenges between a, the list of goals of piano teachers and the wishes and directions of Alexander teacher and how those come together and separate in our different contexts. So we wanted to collect data about uh, what happens in the piano lessons that were inspired by Alexander principles. We wanted to analyze the students' responses and look at the teacher navigating between these two worlds. And we were hoping to propose some effective ways to incorporate Alexander technique principles into teaching piano. So let me just take a moment and speak about our research team. So I knew that I wanted to be involved, of course. And so did Jennifer. Little did she know, I called it a mini little project. And then we decided that perhaps we wanted a few more eyes on our data. So I invited one of my students, Aaliyah, who trained with me to be an Alexander teacher and is also a piano teacher to participate in the analysis. And we wanted to hear from somebody who's had no background in Alexander Technique, but was a piano teacher. So we invited Leslie to join us and look at the data. And lastly, we had some technical support with another student of mine who's an Alexander teacher and her name is Denise. So what this slide shows is that the process was emergent, evolving, and uh, continuous. So um, Jennifer continued to take lessons and still does to this day. And through the lessons, we honed the questions that we wanted to look at. We discussed some possible activities that will highlight away from the piano and near the piano. And then we uh, looked at ways to collect the data and analyze it. And we are still synthesizing and analyzing um, the data from all the students that participated. So what did we do? We took student, six students and each one got 
six piano lessons that were all videotaped. And each lesson included some Alexander inspired activities away from the piano and near the piano and some work at the piano. We used WeView, um, which is a time specific um, platform for videos and I'll speak about that in a moment. We coded and analyzed all the data looking at Alexander principles and piano pedagogy. And in this um, presentation, I'll just speak about one student. So the technology we used is um, a platform called WeView that was developed at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. And it allows for time specific comments on videos. So we had six videos for six students and each one of the four of us sat down and watched the videos and made comments. So if you look at the bottom part of the slide, you'll see these triangles. Each color is a different observer. So I was like blue, and then we had uh, Jennifer and Aaliyah and Leslie. And we each put a code up at the specific moment that we wanted to highlight. So the codes could be TQ for teacher question or SQ for student question. Uh, we had activities away from the piano and near the piano. We had um, codes from Alexander principles and from piano pedagogy. And then what we did was uh, look at this pile of codes and an analysis of moments and we tried to make sense of it. Okay, so let me introduce you to Fiona. Fiona was seven years old when we uh, invited her to participate in the project. It was her second year of playing piano with Jennifer. Each lesson in the study had some Alexander inspired activities and some playing. And Jennifer's goal for the th six weeks was to work on broken triads, looking at fluency and release of shoulders, uh, elbows and wrists and appropriate use of fingers with the support of the back. So let me talk to you a bit about the activities that we did away from the piano. So the first one uh, is the ball exercise and we used a ball or a doll um, that uh, Jennifer called Thunder, which is pretty soft. And the intention was to have students experience what it's like to move their arms with freedom. And so they held uh, Thunder and uh, the instruction was to follow the ball with your hands as you um, move the arms um, from above your head to below. And then we added looking at the mirror as you do that, bending your knees as you do that, thinking up, breathing, and becoming more and more aware of how the parts function together in movement. So let me show you what it was like for Fiona in week three. Do the same thing, good question. And watch, observe your shoulders as you let thunder fall and follow with your hands. Yeah. So uh, first notice that uh, Fiona is not hesitating to ask, well, what am I supposed to do? And she's standing in front of the mirror, moving the arms and watching herself. And Jennifer keeps probing, explaining and giving cues. So week six, same activity away from the mirror. And here we go. So the arms move freely um, and Jennifer adds the Alexander language of thinking up as you release the arms. The other set of activities were, were, were uh, near an adjustable table. So the table was a music stand that was placed uh, horizontally and it had plywood at the top. The advantage of it was that it was adjustable to the height of the student. And the other advantage was that it wasn't the piano. So students could practice using their hands, elbows, wrists, arms in relation to this surface without making sound and without the worry of playing correctly. Um, so that was a place where uh, Jennifer took many students and in this case, Fiona to practice the circular wrist rotation and the connection between um, the decision to use the shoulder properly supported by the elbow and by the wrist to create a certain movement 
to create a particular sound. So here's Fiona um, near the uh, adjustable table. Well, what are you noticing? What are you noticing right now? Is it comfortable? Not exactly. Do you know why? <laughs> yes. So keep it nice and soft. It does not feel. Okay, so again, uh, Fiona doesn't, uh, when when she's asked, she says it doesn't really feel great. She's still willing to do it. Uh, she's not sure why she's doing it and slowly this will become more apparent. And uh, Jennifer is clear with her instructions and with the purpose. So this was really a flavor of what we did away from the piano. Um, and so this is the six weeks at a glance. So from the perspective of piano technique, uh, the focus for the six weeks was uh, playing chords, uh, broken triad, bro uh, broken chords, working on each hand separately and putting them together, noticing accuracy of movement and uh, sound. And the challenges started with um, Fiona leaning into the piano in week one to slowly understanding how to move the arms properly, use the thumb properly, release the wrists and um, and be more and more efficient and, uh, and then consistent in the sound. So the activities away from the piano were thunder, mirror, and the adjustable table. And, um, and we used, uh, Jennifer used different Alexander principles. She spoke about the primary control, the force of habit, uh, end gaining, the means we're by, and how the manner of use impacts functioning. So although she didn't name all of these with uh, concepts that way, she definitely spoke about each and every one of those. So if we look at the development of sound language and use over the six weeks, initially Fiona's sound was better when she was standing and then she was able to express what she was noticing and con make connections and links. And then she started using metaphors. She used the mirror more and more and then her sound gets more stable as she is better supported. And she's able to speak about her experiences. Jennifer's role was to help Fiona articulate her growing kinesthetic awareness, reframe her observations in terms of what she was to teaching, using uh, specific Alexander terms and using uh, Fiona's metaphors to um, express her learning process. So taking a moment away from the actual project, I just wanna look at learning a skill, in this case, playing the piano and even more specifically, um, playing um, broken chords and connecting that to larger theories in education and uh, to Alexander Technique as a paradigm for learning. So in learning a skill, we have physical aspects and thinking elements that we, we need exposed and expressed. Uh, we wanna be moving out of habit. We move out of autopilot to learn something new. So we are moving from the familiar to the unknown. So there are always unsettling components in learning something new. And uh, if everything feels at a total equilibrium, we're actually not learning something new. So in order to step into the unknown, um, well, uh, the student needs to feel that they can experiment, question, explore, push their own boundaries. And the teacher's job is to identify uh, the student's habits, help them observe them, and scaffold between the old and the new. Uh, one of the other jobs of the teacher is to analyze mistakes so that students can learn from them and use them as stepping stones. And uh, another piece of learning a skill is to um, find what are the smallest units that could be taught, and we call that chunking, and then working on a chunk and then putting all the chunks together to create more complex uh, ways of um, applying the skill. Overall, we are looking for efficiency of use, which again is where Alexander Technique comes in. We use specific language to articulate what it is that we are learning and how we are learning it. And uh, we are doing all of that to move from just the technical part to the more artistic expression in music making. So if we look globally at teaching and learning, uh, Jennifer was both teaching and learning and Fiona was learning 
and maybe teaching uh, Jennifer with her reactions as well. So they both uh, were using observation skills. They made explicit links. They used Alexander principles and concepts. They created a shared language that um, involved expressing the kinesthetic lear uh, learning that took place and connected it to sound. And they made explicit connections between near the piano and away from the piano. Okay, looking back at our research group and, um, and how we know that learning took place. So the task for each one of the observers was to identify moments of learning. So how do they know and which moment was it that in indicates to them that Fiona has learned something? And all four of us found the exact same moments as moments of learning. And when we analyzed these moments, they all included some technical elements and some sound. Uh, they highlighted a shared language that was created between Fiona and Jennifer. And it was a language that, connect, that made connections, that looked at links between the kinesthetic and sound, between use and function, and between different parts of the lesson. And let me just give you a flavor of our favorite metaphor. So Fiona chuckles as she says this, because it is pretty funny. My shoulder needs to go to the spa because it's overworking and needs to relax. And my fingertips are not doing enough so they need to go to the gym and exercise. And uh, what I like the most, well, I like the creativity of the metaphor, but I also like her chuckling about this. So when we look at uh, the four of us uh, over um, multiple areas of interest that we've analyzed, I'm going to highlight in this talk just two aspects. One is the attention to sound and the other one is the challenges. And I'm focusing on those because in each one of those two categories, each one of the four of us came from a different perspective and highlighted different things. So for Jennifer, the attention to sound related to her students learning the connection between how they use themselves and what they sounded like. So for her, for each student to understand that the way they held their arm related directly to sound making was very important so that they become agents and could teach themselves a bit more. For me, the highlight was how students use themselves and how that affected their sound. So I looked at, I observed the student's movement and then listened. Aaliyah observed the students and made uh, observations about the connection between good or not so good use and good and not so great sound. And Leslie only focused on sound and made some comments about the relationship between Jennifer and Fiona. And from the point of view of challenges, the challenge, the biggest challenge for Jennifer was using the time in the piano lesson in a way that was different from before. She had to give some space and time for the Alexander explorations and at the same time not take away from the piano part of the students learning. And so that there was a tension around timing throughout the process for her. For me, the two challenges were the lack of my hands on, on the students. So teaching Alexander inspired principles uh, through working with my student and then she took it to her uh, studio was a, a big challenge for me. And the other one was articulating the different use of hands-on because when I put my hands on it in a particular way that is very different from the way um, Jennifer put her hands on. And um, reconciling these two was a big challenge for me. Um, Aaliyah's challenge came from her beginning experience as a beginning Alexander teacher uh, into her own piano teaching. So she was grappling with how to connect the two and that was the challenge that she spoke about. And Leslie highlighted a, a completely different challenge. She said that in order to do the work we are doing, students need to feel comfortable expressing their opinion. And there needs to be a, a space where students could uh, not be worried about the hierarchical difference between them and the teacher 
And that was something that we hadn't thought about, but is a really important point. So just a recap of our findings. We truly feel that Alexander Technique, because it is a psychophysical approach to education, provides a great paradigm for teaching any skill or any art skill-based uh, practice, and in this particular case, playing the piano. We saw that Alexander Technique was a great framework to hone observation skills, to provide language to capture the kinesthetic learning and, uh, and support it. And the student um, felt safe to ask questions, to uh, improve slowly the kinesthetic awareness and connect it to making sound at the piano. The teacher's observation skills got better, her questioning and reframing and using students' language. And then we also uh, found it important to articulate the different use of hands and the different purpose. For Jennifer, she put her hands on students for, to highlight where the parts are. And um, for me, I put hands on as an Alexander teacher to indicate the habit and provide some support for a new organization of, of the parts in order to give more support to play the piano. And uh, both Jennifer and I found that the actual systematic collection and analysis of data really allowed us to explore our own practices and learn from it. So here's Fiona a year later, not just taller, but more confident. And here she is. So she's learned a lot. Okay, what are we up to now? Fiona is still learning, the, uh, learning to play the piano and enjoying it. Uh, actually, in the preparation for this talk, she looked at the clips with her mom and was so surprised. She said she looked so small. Jennifer and I are still working together. Uh, Jennifer's created opportunities for me to work with hands-on with her students from this project and uh, other students in her practice so that they can experience what hands-on work is like. We continue to analyze the data and we are looking for different places to share our findings to music educators and Alexander teachers. And we were very excited that the Music Teachers National Association e-journal published our first uh, paper on this project. And if anything that I've said um, intrigues you and you would like further conversations, please don't hesitate to email me and I just want to take a moment to thank you for listening and for this great opportunity to get together in times of connection only um, through Zoom and um, in direct ways, we can still be connected and explore the ideas that we all care about. Thank you. So it was really great to participate in this conference this way. And I'm really looking forward to all the other uh, presentations. Take care.